Hello, this is Dr. Lee. I'm here back in the historic library, just a different angle, and um, I wanted to respond to Dr. Gooby and his dog Doobie. Gooby and Doobie. So this video, which you can listen to here, it's a 40 minute video where he talks about, and this um, neurosurgeon talks about why he quit neurosurgery. He's an MIT educated undergrad, and then he went to medical school and then residency, and um, he was pretty cautious about not explaining where he went and who trained him, et cetera. And I don't know him. I uh, actually have no particular um, contact with him, nor do I know who trained him or where he, he was. But I um, wanted to respond to his story because it resonated with me. First of all, I have to say, I commend Dr. Gooby and his dog Doobie for doing something that is very difficult. He was able to turn down a career in neurosurgery, which is actually quite lucrative in modern standards and compared to the general rest of the population. And he's now spent several months in the woods and um, I really commend his approach to medicine and his goals of putting patient care and his own health first. That is not easy to do. You know, I have a colleague in residency who did the same thing and he's never made a YouTube video about this, um, but um, he was a good friend of mine, he's only uh, very close in residency, and um, he made a decision to stop practicing. He felt that he had earned enough to live a comfortable life, and he was going to be, at that, at that point, um, stop doing any surgery. And he also has similar appreciation or understanding of the challenges and outcomes with spine surgery. <laughs> Well, number one, we're both Asian. Okay, well, that's a uh, given. But it also resonated with me because I also was interested in the brain-machine interface. So when I was young, now I'm probably 10 years older than him, but when I was young, my chairman, who I really appreciate, gave me a lot of good, good advice. Um, so he uh, directed me towards the field of functional, which is the field of uh, brain-computer interface. And I actually even did a fellowship. I went to the Cleveland Clinic. I worked with some premier individuals in the field of functional neurosurgery and thinking about the brain-computer interface. And yet I left that a little bit um, disillusioned myself. I, I didn't feel that that field was really what I needed to do. So I started my job here at the University of Pennsylvania and I gradually, I also did spine surgery because back then when I was hired, we were all general neurosurgeons and I did spine surgery for several years. I also even did spine pain surgery. I was putting in, of course, stimulators, but I was also putting in pedicle screws and doing decompressions. And yes, I agree with Dr. Gooby and his dog Doobie that spine surgery can help people, but there are challenges. There's a huge spine industrial complex industry uh, where the motivations can get complex as to why people are doing certain things. But overall, I also recognize the challenges and outcomes for these patients. And I also co was concerned that one surgery begets another surgery. You do one operation and that can sometimes result in adjacent level disc degeneration, adjacent level fusions in surgery. And so I, Gravit, I was able to shift my career. Fortunately, I had a great mentor, and I think Dr. Dade Lunsford requires a huge shout out. He was my chairman at the University of Pittsburgh, and he was always focused on patient outcomes. Yes, he was a pioneer in stereotactic radio surgery, and he was always pushing the envelope in that, but I always saw in him the desire to help patients. The primary goal was to provide the best possible outcome, even if it was non-surgical. And that was another interesting thing. He defined surgery much more broadly than just cutting and drilling and removing things. But surgery can involve any kind of intervention in the brain where you do something that is invasive, and in this case, it's directing 201 beams of radiation of cobalt-60 into the brain in order to tackle your tumor and to treat your tumor. And Dr. Lunsford and his um, colleague, Dr. Kanzioka, were two great mentors of mine who really focused on patient care first. And with that in mind, I, I really appreciated that fundamental um, primum non desir, first do no harm, but also patients come first. And that attitude and that approach really helped me to continue to drive forward. So yes, I was doing spine surgery, but I was also 
running the Gamma Knife program here, and you know, many of my colleagues would laugh at me and say, oh, that's not surgery. Why are you doing Gamma Knife? Why are you doing surgery, uh, or radio surgery? But I felt that, that it was such a huge part of taking care of patients and being, being able to provide for them in a way that, that gives them good outcomes. And so when I listened to Dr. Gooby uh, tell his story, I, there were many aspects that resonated. Um, so I commend Dr. Gooby. But with that said, I am also responsible for training residents. I have a cadre of medical students that are coming through the university. And I can't leave them just with the message that all hope is lost and you need to go into the woods. Instead, I have a few points that I'd like to convey to those who've listened to the Gooby and Dooby message. Number one, keep moving. Neurosurgery is a big field. Yes, there's spine surgery and there's brain surgery. But between that, there's also peripheral nerve surgery where we operate on the arms or carpal tunnel. There's also vascular surgery where you can do take stroke. There's also just trauma surgery where you take call and you um, do emergency care. So there's a wide spectrum of procedures that can be done in neurosurgery. It doesn't just have to be spine surgery. Now, I understand that spine surgery is the number one procedure that we do, and it's actually uh, the most common procedure that we do as a field, but you can find other things within the field that provide you with professional satisfaction, with, um, with ethical satisfaction. So basically my point is keep moving, keep trying. There's a small little book called Who Moved My Cheese? And it's about these mice and they're accustomed to going through the maze to get the cheese in one spot. They learn and memorize that path, but then the researcher moves the cheese and then they measure how fast it takes for each particular um, mouse to learn a new pathway to get to the cheese. And the important thing is you got to keep trying. You got to keep moving, keep trying. And I believe Dr. Gooby is doing that. Um, the cheese moved because he recognized that the cheese was not what he wanted and he's now trying to find an alternate path. So I think that's very important. And I, my message to my trainees and to residents is don't define neurosurgery narrowly as only X or only Y. We need to make the field big. Neuro intervention in the brain is only growing. We're developing new techniques, new pathways, and who knows how it's going to evolve in the future. So second point, always keep the patient first. And I think this is part of the ethical uh, quandary of um, medicine today. Wendy Dean, she has talked about and coined the term moral injury. And Gooby, Gooby and Doobie actually referenced this in his video. Um, moral injury can happen when you feel as if you are, have to do something or you have to participate in something that you feel is ethically inappropriate or unsafe. And I recognize that that is not um, it's not a good place to be in. As you go through training, ask the questions, ask the right questions. Am I really helping patients? We have a uh, ethical responsibility to our patients to provide them with what we feel is the best possible care. When we select trainees, that is the number one consideration. Are you ethical? Because I have seen surgeons with a moral compass that is askew and off and they will flame and burn. And uh, I just told a patient the other day, I said, look, you don't want a hungry surgeon who as soon as you come in, I'm so hungry to do your surgery that I, I, I'm very busy. I've been here over 18 years. I'm not hungry. I only want to operate on the right people. And when the time comes, we'll know when it's time for you. So um, maintain your moral compass. Um, I think that's extremely important. The third point that I do actually appreciate is the importance of self-care. And we are of no use to anybody if we are not taking care of ourselves. Now, each individual has certain capacity for a punishment. And in residency, that really was part of it. It's uh, how many hours can you stay awake? How many hours can you work? When I trained, there was no 80 hour work week. We would, you know, I was just telling one of my residents, she couldn't believe it, but we would come in on Friday and not go home until Monday after spina bifida clinic. And so, but that, that, I mean, that kind of process doesn't exist today, but it's incredibly important to do the things that you need to take care of yourself. And I, I commend Dr. Gooby and Doobie for, for taking the steps that he needs to do that. Now, 
we can do many steps to do that. I took the advice of my high school classmate, Dr. Sunil Singhal, who told me I need to work out in the mornings. And he's absolutely right. I take care of myself first, and then that allows me to take care of my patients. So, 4.30 a.m., wake up, I drink my coffee, and by 5, I'm trying to get moving, trying to start exercising. And many times, the, the workout is nowhere near as good as if I were to do it later in the day. Um, but that kind of self-care is super important. I know that there are individuals who will do meditation in the morning, and I think all of that is super important for, um, for uh, preventing this kind of burnout. With that said, I think these are the three points that I, I want to say um, in response to Dr. Gooby and Doobie. Number one, I applaud him for his honesty. I applaud him for um, coming out and saying and doing the things that many of us might feel but don't have the courage to do. Number, number two, I think it's very important to keep moving and keep trying. You're not stuck just being a spine surgeon or just being a vascular surgeon. There might be ways that you can morph your career into, into something that you really like to do. I I'm very fortunate. I was able to transform my career. I do great surgeries. I do skull-based surgery. I'm looking in the brain stem every week and it's not easy to do, but make sure you choose a situation where it, 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 there is some flexibility um, to do that. Um, another important point always is the patient is first. Always treat the patient as if they're your family member. And with that, when you have that moral compass, when your compass is straight and you know where the north is, you will always uh, go the right direction. And then number three, take the time out that you need. Take care of yourself first in order to help and take care of others. For me, what that means is waking up early and exercising. It might be something different for everyone. I, I urge you to take all these steps to avoid moral injury, to avoid burnout. I know that Dr. Gooby and Duby will make an important uh, course correction and um, he's gonna have great contributions to society and to humanity. Uh, it may, may or may not be within neurosurgery. So uh, with that said, thank you all for your time and attention. Feel free to uh, link and subscribe and listen to another video up here.